you guys remember the song by Billy Joe, Piano Man? Sing us a song, you're the piano man. It's, it's kind of a sad song. And today I'm gonna to share with you some data that I think is kind of sad. The good news is the average net worth for people that are over 50 years old is up 50%. But stay tuned, because I'm gonna share with you what the bad news on that is. Okay, so what is this bittersweet news? This good news, bad news. Let's go for a walk and talk about it. Every three years, the survey of consumer finance comes out. Now, this is a report that is, is uh, sponsored by the Federal Reserve. So this is legitimate data. So the bittersweet news is for people 50 plus, our net worths have increased 50%, five zero percent over the last three years. That's a huge increase. Before you get too excited, there's an asterisk next to this. As a reminder, your net worth is the value of all of your assets, less the value of your liabilities. So let me give you an example. Let's say your only asset was your home and your home is worth $500,000. And let's say you owed, you had a mortgage of $200,000. Now, if that was your only asset and your only liability, then, then your net worth is gonna be the $500,000 less the $200,000 liability, your mortgage, which is gonna be $300,000. Now, if on top of that, you also had a bank account with $50,000 in it, now all of a sudden your net worth is gonna be 350,000. So 2019, just before the pandemic started, for people 55 to 64 years old, the average net worth in the United States was $250,000. And now it's up almost 50% since, since then, and it's $364,000. So, so what's the bad news with this? Well, the bad news is this is exactly where we were in 2014 on an inflation adjusted basis in 2014 essentially our net worth was the same so it really hasn't moved up the question is why did the net worth move up i think there were two reasons one is there was a lot of stimulus money being put into the economy to prop up the economy because we didn't know we didn't know what was going to happen uh, when the pandemic hit and so I personally think the U.S. government made the right decisions there. Did we handle it perfectly? No, of course not. In hindsight, would we have done things differently? Yes, of course we would have. But I'd rather err on overstimulating the economy than to run the risk of putting us into a depression. So I applaud the government for what we did. However, that also caused this inflation that we've just been fighting. Um, and it's, you know, it's the same thing across the board for wages. If you look at the median wages in the United States, it shows that you know, the wages have gone up, but on an inflation adjusted basis, since the pandemic, actually our wages have gone down. Okay, so that's the data. Now, what does that mean for you and I? What it means for you and I is we have to be really careful. We have to plan ahead and be ready for retirement. What I suggest, again, this isn't financial advice, but I want to put this on your radar screen. And what I think is helpful for, for many of us is to think about, can we reach our financial goals five years before we need to? Because the reality is, as we get close to retirement, we're kind of in a precarious situation, right? Many of us have been doing the same job for 10, 15, 20 plus years, and while we're extremely valuable to the firm that we're at, unfortunately, ageism is a real thing. So if we were to lose our job or God forbid, uh, have a health issue, let's say we end up getting, uh, having cancer uh, or a heart attack, you know, does that happen to people in their 50s? You better believe it does. In fact, it happened to my uncle. My uncle passed away at 56 years old. Um, so I've always been thinking, you know, by the time I'm 55, I want to be ready to retire. And fortunately, you know, I hit that number personally um, in my late 40s. And I'm glad because like when COVID hit, right, that was a scary time. And it was particularly a scary time in the, the money management industry, which is what the industry I'm in. And the market was down 20% in three weeks. And, you know, could we have entered a depression during COVID? We could have, and I'm grateful that we did not. But you know, that would, I likely would have lost my job during that period of time. So trying to get to your goal, you know, let's say your goal is to retire at 55. I would really encourage you, 
try to get to that goal at 50. And one of the things that's going to offer you a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility is if you can be as close to debt free as possible by the time, um, by the time you're 50. So look at your mortgage and look, I understand it's hard to do this. When did I pay off my mortgage? I was over 50. I was probably closer to 55. Uh, and it, it was something that was important to me. Now that said, recently our interest rates uh, were pretty low. So if you have a mortgage rate that's 3%, 2.5%, I can tell you, likely, again, this isn't financial advice, but likely you're better off keeping that mortgage financially. But from a peace of mind standpoint, boy, if you're going to sleep better at night, there's a, there's a lot to be said for that. And from an optionality standpoint, there's a lot to be said for paying off your house. Because if you can pay off your house in your 50s, now all of a sudden if you think, you know what, I'm kind of tired of the rat race. I've been working hard. This pressure is, is really beating down on me. Well, now you have a lot of flexibility if you decide you want to retire. Well, where if you have a mortgage, let's say your mortgage payment is $3,500 a month, you know, there's not a lot of people that are going to retire with that hanging over their head. So that's one reason to consider paying off your mortgage. So again, the good news, bad news on this report, right? The, survey of consumer finance, which is sponsored by, it's run by the Federal Reserve. This is really solid data. This is probably the most solid data that we have. The good news is we're back to 2014. The bad news is we're not further ahead than that. So, you know, do what you can, keep saving. One of the things that I talk about is, many of us were raised with this philosophy, save 10% of what you earn and you're gonna be fine. And I wish that was the case, but you know, the world was different for the people that gave us that advice. In my case, that was my parents that gave me that advice. Save 10% and you're gonna be fine. But you know, in that world, there were three legs to the retirement stool. There was social security, we still have social security, though for us, for many of us, it's gonna be taxed. Uh, for our parents' generation, uh, until 1984, none of social security was considered taxable income. That leg of the stool is still there, but it's a little bit shorter because many of us are gonna to have to pay tax on that. The second leg of the stool was our own retirement savings, which is the same as today. But what's different is a lot more people back then had a pension from their company. And those days are gone now. Companies are not offering pensions. So our stool, instead of having three legs, you know, one of the legs is shortened and the other leg got ripped off in its entirety. So. Unfortunately, we have to run things a little bit different. And I would argue saving 10% is no longer enough. I mean, you do what you can, but if you can save 15 to 20%, and I know it's aspirational, I think your future self is really gonna save you. So, you know, how do you save 20%? It's not easy. I'll give you a strategy to think about. Now, I'm not a big fan of budgeting. A lot of people would say, oh, start tracking all of your expenses. And, and cut out your Starbucks. You know, I can tell you that the reason you're not saving 20% if you're not able to, and few of us are, the reason people don't save 20% has nothing to do with whether they go to Starbucks or not. It has to do with their kind of high level factors. And one of those high level factors is, you know, looking at your wants, looking at your needs, and then your savings. And when people don't, can't save more than 10%, Oftentimes it's because their wants, they're spending a lot of money on wants. And it's your money. I'm not, this is, none of this is descriptive. I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm just giving you some things to think about. But if, if you are spending a lot of money on your wants, I want you to think about how much joy are you really getting from the stuff you're buying. You know, if you're putting things on your credit card, if the Amazon cardboard boxes are piling up in your house every day, ask yourself, how much joy is this really giving me? Is it, is it worth that? Because I can tell you, I've been a retirement advisor now for over 20 years. And few people say, boy, you know, 10 years ago, I bought this, this gadget, or I upgraded my iPhone every year instead of every three years. And, that brought me a lot of joy. I really, I really don't hear that. What I do hear is, you know, I spend time with my grandkids or I spend time with my adult children or when my kid was 16 years old, we took a trip to Europe together. 
and that's just a special, special memory. So what people tend to really appreciate is, is the experiences that they have in investing in relationships. You know, if you can save 20%, that's great, but how do you do that? And that's where the 50, 30, 20 rule comes in. 50% towards your needs, things like your mortgage or your rent, your utilities, food, not going out to eat, that would be a want. And then 30% on your wants, things like those Amazon packages that show up, going out to eat, taking a nice vacation, things like that. If we can keep our needs under 30%, which is not easy to do, but that leaves us 20% left over for savings. So that, that's the hard way to save 20%. Let me tell you the easy way to save 20%. And then I, after all, I am walking through an airport, then let's bring this plane in for a landing. So the easy way to save 20% is over time. You get there gradually. And every time you get a raise, every time you change jobs and you make more money, I want you to think about half of that goes to current you and to your current family and half of that goes to future you. And over time, you'll be increasing the amount of money that you save. And that's really what this video up here is about, is, is balancing things between current you and future you. And many of you are sacrificing more than you need to right now in your current journey. Yes, being prepared for retirement is important, but it's also important to enjoy the journey. So seven things I want you to stop doing in your 50s and 60s to enjoy the journey more on the way to retirement. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in there.